Why, hello again, or for the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And how about we just go ahead and pick up right where I left off with the over-analysis of Order of the Thorn. So basically, we tried to steal the treasure out of this tree over here, but we were caught by a gnome who almost shanked us. But fortunately for our bard friend here, these two ladies showed up and convinced the gnome to go somewhere else. But nevertheless, we're still not done with that tree because we really do need that treasure inside of it. And no, we just can't go back there and grab it. That's not how you play adventure games. You see, in order to get the treasure out of the tree, you gotta go on a grand quest involving finding a beehive and a stick. And fortunately for us, we already found a stick, so now all we need to find is a beehive. And lo and behold, we find a beehive right here. Now these bees are all in a tizzy, so naturally we need to play some soothing jams. I don't know who we're playing, uh, who's a mellow artist? Yanni? Yeah, we'll go with that. We're playing the bees some Yanni. And that causes them to mellow out. And then we can pick up the beehive, right? Well, not quite. You see, we need to pick it up with the cloak that we found on that island. That's right. The whole reason to go to that island was to get that cloak so you can use the cloak on a beehive. Adventure game logic for you, folks. But hey, we got a beehive now, so what the heck do we do with it, you ask? Well, now, you just gotta wander around this map for a while until eventually you encounter something. Quick, lassies, step closer. Yeah, our dear gnome friend's been pinned by a bear. In most circumstances, that'd be nice, but this is a real bear. And also, I had no idea that this was going to happen. Because you see, after picking up the beehive, I just kind of wandered around the map and, well, stumbled across this. Open world gaming for you, folks. Good. Now, take out that snack I saw you tuck away earlier. Perfect. Now, you stupid bear, get the scent and eat those two fool girls so I can get away! Hey, it's just like that old joke. You don't need to outrun the bear, you just need to outrun your friends. So it should be pretty obvious what's happening right here. The gnome's trapped by the bear, and he's trying to weasel his way out of it by getting these two girls who are not trapped by the bear eaten by the bear. I mean, if I was a bear, I'd just go ahead and eat the gnome because, well, the gnome's already pinned and those girls have freedom of movement. But what do I know? I'm not a bear. Well... Not in that sense of the word. Just go away, you silly girls! To have such dim-witted creatures lecture me, Skelton the Gnome! So, Skelton the Gnome's a big fat jerk, and we obviously need to save him because, well, it's a puzzle we can solve. And we're a nice protagonist, so, yeah, we just basically attach the bamboo stick to the beehive, and it lures the bear off of him. And aren't we just a wonderful hero? The bear swats the remaining bees away, and quickly eats the honeycomb before settling back down to sleep. You discard the sticky bamboo stick. I don't deserve this kind of treatment. I'm Skelton, the gnome. I've got to go visit my cousin up in the Mira Mountains soon. Those girls are driving me nuts. Those two girls are right. What a rude little gnome. Not even a thank you for saving his life. So the gnome's as close as we're gonna get to a villain in this game. He's just a big, fat, mean-spirited little creature that, frankly, nobody likes. Hell, even those two happy-go-lucky ladies seem to be thoroughly done with him. But nevertheless, since we saved his life, I guess that means we can take the treasure as our reward because if he was a nicer creature, he would have offered us the treasure because you know that's usually how these things work. One good turn deserves another. We save your life, we get your treasure because we need it to solve a puzzle and it's really obvious. So yeah, this should go off without a hitch. I knew you'd try again. I'm not stupid, you know. I was always going to take my treasure with me when I left. Oh no, our hero's really in a jam now. We really shouldn't expect to be saved just in the nick of time again by the exact same people. I mean, that would just be redundant. Little sir, it seems you don't have any good in your soul after all. We've tried to help you and bring out some inner goodness, but it's to no avail. And now you're going to kill this lovely young man just because he found your stolen treasure? And after he saved you from the bear, you tried to lure him into killing us. It's time you learn some manners, little sir. And also, it's time for us to explain what's happened with this character up till now. To firmly establish why they're going to do what they're going to do. In case you forgot, because not everyone's going to play this game in one sitting like me. <laughs> and you're going to teach me, lass? Yes, we are. Wind, water, and elements among us. 
turn this greed and malice into a fungus. Well, damn, they turned him into a mushroom. That sounds really terrible to be a sentient being trapped as a mushroom. There, that'll brighten this corner of the woods nicely. Wow, and her perky attitude about it makes it all the more terrifying. Hee <laughs> you're a higher intelligence being trapped as a fungus. <laughs> you're completely vulnerable to the environment or to just any old person knocking you over. <laughs> you could die and be smashed into a million pieces and there's nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> it seems I'm in your debt, ladies. You saved my life. There is no debt, Finn. It was our pleasure. What about him? Uh, will he stay a mushroom for, uh, forever? Oh no, it'll wear off eventually. When he's learned his lesson. Well, that's a fairly vague and undefined period of time. It could be like, what, a day, a week, a year, however long funguses live for? I mean, they don't live very long, do they? So, he better get his act together pretty quickly. I mean, is winter coming soon? Are there seasons in this universe? I mean, this could be really bad if winter's like a week away. Whew. Well, that's good to know. Good luck in your quest, Finn. I do hope it's you who finds the queen if it's not us. Thank you, ladies. Best of luck to you. Goodbye. So anyway, now that the troll is trapped in a fungus state of existence, we can freely take his treasure and he can do anything about it. Heck, is he even aware that we're taking his treasure? How aware are funguses of their surroundings? I just don't know. But what I do know is that I need to give this treasure to the troll because that's the stereotype. Trolls love treasure. But I don't know if we should be judging this troll, though. Sound like we really spoke to him. For all we know, he needs this treasure so he can afford tuition to the university. I mean, maybe he's just trying to better himself, that's all. You hand the treasure to the troll. Now that's the sound of a troll who's happy he's finally going to be able to afford that master's in fine art. But anyway, now that he's walked away, we have access to a brand new area. As you enter this magical clearing, you see a pretty young lady. Could it be? Is this the queen? Hello there. I'm Finn, and it's a great pleasure to meet you. Ah, are you the queen hidden away here? You know, that's a good question. We never got a photo or really a description of the queen at all. I mean, for all we know, the gnome was the queen. Oh my god, those ladies turned the queen into a fungus. Bard, it's wonderful to see you again. Before you can say anything, Fowlin grabs the girl's hand and runs off. Looks like I found the queen first, Bard. Don't bother coming back. I'll tell them I found her by myself. Oh no, who would have guessed that a legendary hero who seemed so grand and noble is really a jerk? I mean, that's never happened in a story before. Your Majesty, you're so lucky I found you. Like the time I Fowlin the hero. As they leave, the girl turns her head and smiles at you. It's probably a pity smile because this hero is so pathetic he's not standing up for himself. He's not even put up a fight. This lady's just being kidnapped in front of him and he's not even saying, no, don't do that. You're being a jerk. My god, how passive is our protagonist? I should tell you the story of how I defeated Lord Sinister on our journey back to the court. Yeah, hero, just don't do anything just like you did when the pixie came and stole your daddy's magic song book. <sighs> our hero's a doormat. Oh well, you may as well head back to town for the reward ceremony. Yeah, our reward ceremony. After all, if this lady's the queen, we did find her first, so she should be able to collaborate that fact and be like, yeah, the bard found me first and then this dude just grabbed me and took me back here. I didn't ask for this, but yeah, the bard, yeah, first guy to find me. He wins the prize. But passivity aside, there is one very important item here that we absolutely need to pick up, otherwise we cannot progress further in the game. Bending down, you pick a single beautiful rose from among the flowers. Score! We got the roses now to give to that lady, the potion maker. Or did you already forget about that? Because you see, we need to give her a rose and sing her a song, and then that way she'll know that Ted loves her. And then, because Ted loves her, Ted will let us into the swamp. And we need to go there still because we gotta get the harp for the pixies. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. You may have forgotten about it. Oh, hey, Finn! Hello, Chucker. Uh, why aren't you at the ceremony? What ceremony? Well, Baolin found the queen. Oh, he didn't find the queen. He thought it was her, but it turns out it's Alka the barmaid's daughter, Arde. 
Oh my. <laughs> That's nice though. Yeah, laugh it up, hero. Just because a dude kidnapped the wrong lady doesn't make you any less of a doormat. Yeah, Helka was so happy. But Feolin wasn't as much. He's been drinking in her tavern ever since. So, the queen is still out there? Yep, she sure is. No, I'm sure I'm not finding her. <laughs> well, we may have more in common with Chucker than we realize. But at any rate, we gotta give that rose to that nice lady who wants to fall in love with Ted. You hand the rose to Glenda. Ted asked me to give you this rose. It symbolizes his love for you. Pure and beautiful. Oh my! This... this is beautiful! Ted is such a romantic. She looks off with a sigh and a wistful gaze in her eyes. A wistful gaze in her eyes? Oh dear, she might have glaucoma. But hey, we still need to play that jam for her. That's right. Now it's time for us to play the white boy with the acoustic loot card. I hear the chicks dig it, man. Ted feels so much, but has a hard time saying it. So, together, we wrote this song to express how he feels about you. He hopes you like it. What a beautiful song! And my Ted wrote that for me? I just put down to music what Ted told me to. Thank you, Bard. That was most beautiful. I must go and see him at once. Thank you, Finn, for all your help. I know Ted would be reluctant to tell me in person how he feels. I'm glad you helped him. I'll tell him how I feel- Well, isn't that just sweet? Ted had to do nothing other than, well, fish. We did all the work, put in all the effort, wrote the song, found the rose. But yeah, it was all worth it, folks. It was all worth it because now we can go to the swamp. Finally. Yeah, Ted really came out ahead on this deal. Now Ted's gone, I suppose I can help you. If you still want to go into the swamp. Yes, I do. Never, never wear swim trunks wet. Uh, hold on. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, and I'm really worried that the turtle might be going senile. However, though, he does teach us one song, one important song, that apparently pacifies raptors that live in the swamp. That's right, in this fairy tale world, there are raptors, like the dinosaur or the basketball team, living in the swamp. That's pretty crazy. They should weaponize them. You also might want to try finding old Yama Uba while you're in the swamp there. She has a hut somewhere to the north. She's very wise, but mind your manners with her. Okay, so we gotta go to the swamps to find some harps for a pixie and to meet some lady whose name reminds me of a particular South American tea. So let's go into the swamp and see what's happening in there. Oh damn, there's a dinosaur in here right off the bat. What the hell are we going to do? Well, we're going to play a jam to pacify it. Because apparently that's all Jurassic Park was lacking. A loot player. It would have been a completely different movie if they had one there. All right, so the dinosaur is now pacified. And we can just lollygag for as long as we want in the swamp without any threat of death. Well, at least until we meet these things that look like something rejected out of the Phantom Toll booth. Yeah, I may be showing my age, but that was a very trippy kids movie that has stuck with me for all my life. These little guys are called sloths and are quite unfriendly. When you accidentally click through the beautiful narrator's voice. Sorry about that. I've done that a lot in this playthrough. I don't know why. Sometimes I get itchy fingers. While my fingers may be itchy, though, my brain is ever yearning for more information. And in order for us to progress any further in the swamp, we're going to need to educate ourselves about these sloth things. That's right. We gotta go back into the Fairy Kingdom town and go find a librarian and get some books about these things. No, I'm not kidding you. We really need to read some books about these furry balls of razor wire in order to get past them. Yeah, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, folks. So let's get to learning. But speaking of waste, while on the way to the librarian, I decided to pop in and say hello to that noble knight. Well, is he a knight? Whatever. That legendary hero who turned out to not be such a legendary hero. Hey there, why so glum? I thought I had the queen. Turns out it was just the tavern owner's daughter. Who somehow got past the troll. I guess you waited for him to take his 15 minute break and then snuck past him. I'm sorry. They gave it an honest try. 
the challenge isn't over. Yeah, a perky-go-lucky happy attitude is all that a person needs when he's drowning his sorrows in a bar. I'm a fraud. I never defeated Lord Sinister. No! I could have never had guessed that. Who would have guessed that? Who would have guessed this pompous prick was a liar? When I reached his stronghold and we fought to the inner sanctum, he was in the midst of doing some kind of arcane ritual. I was scared. I faltered. When he moved to attack me, suddenly he disappeared, as if sucked out of the room by magic. He shrieked and screamed and cried something about, this isn't Avalon, and then he was gone. The rest of the men came in and assumed I killed him, as his cloak and armor were left behind. And I didn't correct them. Please keep my secret, Finn. Please. Well, I don't think you gotta worry about Finn, but maybe the bartender who's right in front of you and could hear your conversation. Yeah, she might be a problem. Of course. It wouldn't do anyone any good for me to tell people. Someday, you will have to, though. You know, there must be zero yellow journalism in the land of the fairies, because I know in this world, TMZ would pay a lot of money for this story. So yeah, Flynn, you would benefit, at least monetarily, from telling people this story. I know. And that will take real courage. I hope I find that. Me too. But at any rate, we've just learned a deep, dark secret about a rival. And we haven't even been to the library yet. Yeah. We must be approaching the climax, folks, because stuff's kicking off! So what's going to happen next time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see.